uh, child's pose. I'll make my way over to my mat to join you guys. All right, for child's pose, you'll go ahead and open up your knees fairly wide. If you can touch your toes behind you. If you have sensitive knees, an option a lot of times is to fold your mat up, so it's kind of doubled up. That can give you a little extra support. Um, this is especially helpful if you're doing yoga on like concrete or something really hard. I do that a lot when I'm in like breweries and things like that. Usually homes, carpets, or yoga studios isn't so bad, but just a nice little option. So knees come wide, toes come to touch behind you. Sink your feet high, Felix. Sink your feet back onto your heels. And then you can begin to lower your torso now. Hi, buddy. For those of you that don't know, this is Felix. He's my now seven-month-old kitten. I don't know how much you want to participate, but I guess I have a necklace on, so it's going to be fun to take this off. All right, you're going to release your arms down to the mat. You can spread your fingers out wide. Maybe let your elbows fall towards the mat, nice and easy. And close your eyes. Bring your third eye right down to the mat. And begin to take some breaths. Kind of ground down. Hopefully you can release any of those sensations you felt over the past couple of days of stress, of anxiety. I know that they are just not going to go away, but we have to take some peace and solace in these moments. And I think, uh, you know, our communities, right, are a big part of our peace. So, uh, you know, whether your community of your family, your friends, wherever you might find a little bit of peace. Take some, take some comfort in knowing that you are not alone and however you are feeling right now. You can kind of picture us all like on a cloud, right? We're kind of holding each other up. We're holding space for each other. We're sharing this energy. So cool. We're here from California. We're here from Arizona, here in Washington. Um, one of the coolest parts about this online yoga stuff, right? We get to share a little bit of community, not just in a room together. So we're gonna take a big breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Nice, another one like that. Big breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Feel some lightness to your body, some lightness to your mind. And when you're ready, start to make your way from your child's pose up into a tabletop position. So for tabletop, your hips will shift up over your knees. Bring your knees to about hips width distance. Stand your palms nice and wide. Bring a lot of your weight in your fingertips. Kind of grip the mat so you feel like you're almost palming a basketball. And make sure your eye elbows forward. Let's start to move the spine around a little bit. I don't know about you guys, I've been really sedentary the past few days, so it's gonna feel good to move the joints. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your chin. This is cow pose. Exhale, move into cat. Start to elongate through your spine, curve it up like that Halloween cat. Maybe even come up onto your fingertips to give you a little extra height. Nice, inhale back to cow pose. And exhale into cat. Take that a few times. Move through your cat and cow a few times just so you can get some movement. If you'd like to take any other movement while you're here, you can move your hips around side to side. Take some big circles. Let's take one more cow pose together. Inhale and exhale into cat. Beautiful. Come back to center. Inhale, tuck your toes. Exhale to downward facing dog. So shift your hips up towards the sky. Keep your toes about hips width distance from one another. And feel your heels release towards the mat. Your calves might feel kind of tight. Keep a bend in your knees so you can lift your hips up a little higher. So try this. Take a nice, big, generous bend in your knees. Point your tailbone up to the sky, then extend through your legs. Notice that changes your um, position just a little bit. 
Keep that really firm grip in your fingertips, but allow your shoulders to kind of relax as if you would shrug them up and then you release your shoulders away from your neck. Now feel free to walk it out, walk your heels out a few times. Move your hips from side to side, just kind of warming everything up. I am so dang stiff. It's my own fault <laughs> for not doing any movement. All right, let's come into stillness. Just gaze gently between your knees. Keep that generous bend or a nice little bend in your knees, elbow, eyes facing out. Feel really grounded in this posture. Your toes and your fingertips are on the earth. Mother Earth is here to support you. Take a big breath in. Open mouth, exhale. And inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step your feet up to a ragdoll position. So keep them about hips worth distance. Super, super nice big bend in your knees. So your upper torso can hang over your thighs. You can leave your fingertips down here on the mat. So you can bring your pinkies and your elbow crooks. Now, ideally, your bend in your knees is so much, you can actually feel your chest touch your thighs. Sometimes when you think it's all about straightening the legs, it is not. This is about releasing through the low spine kind of sway from side to side a little bit. We can hear some rain outside. All right, release your fingertips down to the mat and toe heel your feet to touch. Keep a generous bend in your knees as you slowly begin to roll on up. Once you get to standing, shrug your shoulders up to your ears, release them down your back. Close your eyes for a moment and bring your hands into the heart center so that your thumbs can press into your heart. Come back to that sense of connection, allowing yourself a moment of peace, choosing to take this time out of a crazy election night to be here with me. Thanks guys, to be here with each other. And our intention tonight is a little Sanskrit phrase. I kind of fell in love with it, gosh, I guess about eight or nine years ago. It's I have it tattooed on the inside of my arm. It's starting to merge together as I grow older. In Sanskrit, it's Loka Somasta Sukino Bhavanti. And it says, may all beings have happiness and peace. And may we, in some way, contribute to that peace and happiness. So one more time in your mind, loka somasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings find peace and happiness. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. All right, to blink your eyes open and release your arms over your side. It's going to take just a couple sun salutations, but no dang chaturangas tonight. I am over them. So from here, inhale, mountain pose. Lift your arms up over your head. Ground down into all four corners of your feet. Tight, look through your quadriceps. Go nice and strong. Almost like you're trying to press your ankle bones together. Now release your shoulders down away from your hips. Beautiful, nice, strong mountain pose. From your inhale, find a little lift through your chest. Exhale, open up. Maybe you open your, up your arms like a cactus. Gaze up toward the ceiling. Keep a little tuck of your chin so your neck is supported. And keep your thighs nice and tight. Inhale, return to your mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold hands through your heart or swan dive. Release your fingertips down to the mat. Keep that bend in your knees so your low back is protected. Inhale to halfway lift. Bring your fingertips to your shins, maybe even above your kneecaps if that feels good. If your fingers are on your shins, think about gently pressing them into your shins as you roll your weight more towards the front part of your feet. Think about a nice flat long spine. Reach your shoulder blades out towards another, one another. Almost like a little beam of light shooting from the crown of your head out through your window into the wall. Awesome. Take a big breath in. Exhale forward. Plant your palms, step back, 
to a plank. We're not gonna turn around yet, but we're gonna shift forward and just low all, lower all the way down. So you can use your knees to get here to the mat. Uh, come straight down if you like, a little extra core exercise through plank. Just some baby cobras to get our spine warmed up. So inhale, press the tops of your feet into the mat, lift your chest. Exhale, release nice and easy. Nice inhale, come back up to baby cobra. So as you press into the ground with the tops of your feet, engage through your thighs, so you actually feel your kneecaps lift. Little to no weight in your fingertips. Just a baby cobra, maybe you can think about striking. Exhale, release back down one more time. Inhale, some rolling baby cobras. And release, really nice. All right, so hands are planted, tuck your toes. Again, use your knees if you like. Inhale up to plank pose. Exhale into downward facing dog. Awesome, let's take a big breath in here. Inhale, open mouth, exhale. Right, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step up to the top, toes to touch forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose, Tadasana, reach your arms high. Exhale, open it up. Inhale, back to mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plank pose, or use your knees. If you like tabletop, you can shift forward, lower down, find your way down to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. One more inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, release. All right, hand your palms, tuck your toes. Inhale, lift up to plank or tabletop. Exhale, downward facing lock. All right, we're gonna speed out if you like one more time through. No baby cobras this time. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step up to the top, toes to touch, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose, reach high. Exhale, open it up. Inhale, back to mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms up back to down dog. Really nice movement, everybody. Take a breath in and a big breath out. Open up your knees wide, lower down, coming into a child's pose. Revisiting that child's pose, sink your hips back towards your heels, arms are out nice and long. Notice if already you feel a little bit more open than you did when we started. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. All right, my friends. That was our movement to get us started. All right, next up, we're gonna move into our balancing posture. So just hang out in your um, child's pose for a moment. All right. So for our root chakra, we're going to actually start in kind of a forward fold um, position like we practice in our flow. So what I want you to do is find an area of your wall that you can use. Now I, I see that I don't think many of you have your video on, so this is good to worry about your video. Find an area, and let's see if I can turn this maybe over here. Let me use this part of the wall here so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So the idea here is that your bum, yeah, your bum is gonna be up against the wall because it's gonna give you a little extra support. Open up your feet, about hips width distance, and start to hang forward, but your bum is on the wall so you can lean back and it'll support you a little bit. You'll keep a bend in your knees so that that way you have lots of support there. Now with some of these restorative postures, they can get uncomfortable after a little bit, so if you need to shift around, it's okay. The idea is that you're spending a little bit more time in these postures to open up some fascia, give you some flexibility. 
So once you feel like you're in a good place, and again, if you have questions, you can always turn on your video, ask them or throw them in the chat if you need me for anything, but I'm sure you guys are doing great. So this is for our root chakra, Muladhara. Now from here, allow your eyes to gently close into a half closed position or fully closed position. Focus your attention on your breath and notice the natural rhythm and flow. Notice your chest rise and fall with each breath. Let's spend some time focusing on your breath. Think about the sensation of relaxing. If you find your mind wandering to other thoughts, gently remind yourself to return to the action of your breath. Allow your breath to fill the empty cavity of your lungs naturally and then allow it to release as naturally as possible. Do not force your breath, just breathe. Let's take three nice long breaths together. In and out. In and out. Last one, in and out, in and out. Now, as you're inhaling, imagine the purest silvery white light filling the entire essence of your being. Breathe deep into your belly and exhale through your chest. See this white light and energy channeling into you from the heavens. Allow it to fill all aspects of your existence. Imagine each cell of your body being filled and rejuvenated with this pure white light. As you exhale, feel all the stress and tensions of your day-to-day -day life released into the universe. Let go of those things that no longer serve you. As you notice this white light coursing through your being, through your crown and down through your spine, your arms, your chest and belly, down through your legs, into your feet, you notice that this white light permeates every cell of your body. Now bring your attention to the base of your spine, which again should be pressed nicely up against the wall. And if at any point this gets too uncomfortable, you can always come to a seat with your legs crossed. You will notice a small ball of white light here. This is the Kundalini, which is ancient energy that is coiled and dormant at the base of your spine. Focus your attention here on the Kundalini. As you move your attention here, see your Muladhara chakra begin to open up. Imagine her like a flower with her petals opening outward to greet the illumination of the sun. As she opens up, you find the rich ruby red color of the Muladhara shining through and coalescing with the white light at the base of your spine. As the Muladhara is emanating this serene, safe ruby light, you can also feel the light begin to envelop you, encompass you. Imagine the ruby red light coursing through your being and then meeting with and becoming the white light present within you. Imagine the ruby red light exists within your body. It is now floating inside and outside of you as an aura. Notice as you spend time here and you feel safe and secure. Spend a little time allowing the aura of the Muladhara to heal you. Take control of the red energy and send it intentionally through different areas of your body. Move the light down to your crown and allow it to fill the space in your head. Move down through your neck, into your shoulders, and down your arms into your palms. Focus the light on each of your fingertips and then back up your arms and through your shoulders. Bring the healing light across the expanse of your chest and back again. 
Remember to breathe as the light travels through your body. Bring the light down through your chest, into your belly, and down into your pelvic region. Sweep the light down your legs and into your feet. Allow the light to exit your feet and connect down to the core of Mother Earth. Take a breath in and take a breath out. All right, from wherever you are, whether you're still dangling or if you made it to the ground, slowly, ever so gently make your way back into a tabletop position. We're gonna take just a couple cat cows to uh, kind of counter that posture. So they allow the spine to relax just a little bit. So again, knees or hips with distance. Knees are hips with distance, hips stack over your knees. Shoulders are directly over your palm. Inhale as you lift your chin, allow your belly to drop. And exhale as you round out. Start to feel the counteraction to that last posture. Take a few cat cows with your own breath. into the second chakra, which is the Svadhisthana. It's our sacral chakra. Uh, if anyone here is not too familiar with the chakras, I'm definitely happy to send you some information after this. And we can even talk about how these postures sort of activate the powers of those spinning wheels that are um, energetically throughout our entire body. It's a really, really uh, fun thing to study. Uh, so now we're gonna move into a butterfly position. So essentially, I'm gonna take for butterfly, come to a seat on your mat. Bring your feet to touch. Now, I know I mentioned bringing pillows with you. If you have sensitive knees and this feels a little wonky, you can always take your pillow and bring it underneath your knee. That's always a nice way to counteract gravity if it feels a little wonky. Plus, this is meant to not cause pain. Maybe a little discomfort, but not pain. So pillows or blankets are an amazing option. Now from here, bring your shoulders up and back and kind of roll your pelvis forward. You don't want to be sinking down. You want to be chest nice and lifted. And take a moment and notice if your weight is equal in both of your sit bones. Maybe you do a little bit of wiggle, make sure that you're equal. Feet can touch. And as you take a breath in, lengthen up through your chest. And as you exhale, perhaps you begin to lean forward a little. Now, this can also be a place where you rest your hands on pillows if you need, or just right down here on the ground. You need to adjust, grab me the pillows, or sometimes even, I don't know, you can play around. If you've got those cool yoga blocks, great. I don't even have them. You can put your hands on books. Just kind of let your shoulders hang. Maybe you walk your fingers out just a little bit further. Once you get to a point that you feel like you can't go any further, allow your head to drop. Just nice and gently and close your eyes, keep them at a nice soft gaze. And you might notice that throughout the time we're here together for the sacral chakra, the idea is you'll start to notice your body opening up just a little bit more with every breath, with every minute that we're here. Take a nice, easy breath in through your nose. Out through the nose. Feel free to reposition yourself at any time that you might need in this posture. All right. In order to remove blocks from the sequel chakra, we'll call on the, universe, on the universe to support us in this intention. By mentally stating this affirmation, we will allow the universe and higher vibration spiritual energy to come and heal this chakra on an energetic level. You can state this affirmation to yourself or out loud. I'll say it and you can think it to yourself if you like. I now call upon the healing energy of the universe to help me balance and heal my sacral chakra. 
as you continue to breathe slowly and deeply, sense loving energy surrounds you. It begins to lift the low vibration of anger and resentment from your sacral chakra. This could be from what's happening right now. This could be for other reasons. Whatever feels good for you to draw into. Feel the lightness of being that is beginning to fill your stomach and hips as you release with the help of this healing energy. We'll work with your higher self to heal past traumas. These memories run in our subconscious, creating clouded and murky energy that can block the flow of positive energy in our chakras. Invite your higher self to meet you in a vast open space in your mind's eye. Your higher self will seem familiar, wise, kind, and safe. They will allow you to look into their eyes to see a memory that has created negative feelings around you and your ability to express your passion. They will show you the most important memory that needs to be healed right now. When you see the memory, allow your higher self to show you how it is affecting your life today. The energy doesn't have to control you anymore. You and your higher self will realize this memory into the river of healing energy that is now before you. Visualize you and your higher self releasing all the energy of this memory in past, present, and future back to this river to be converted into energy that has a more helpful effect in the universe. Allow your higher self to show you a more healing way to handle your body and your mind. Finally, we are going to charge your chakra with light and feel it with prana, which is life force, to boost your creative power. Imagine in front of you is a fountain of orange flowing energy. It is vibrant, strong, and interesting to look at. You feel drawn to this energy and feel it is your own creative energy. Walk with your higher self to this fountain and drink from it. Feel your sacral chakra at the lower stomach feel fill with this creative power that you can use to help others and bring joy to the world. This energy is alive within you and you are able to channel it to manifest what you need to fill your soul's purpose. Take a nice big breath in and a nice big breath out. You can begin to open up your eyes. Start to guide your hands under your knees and just go gently and start to bring them here to a close. Move any of those blankets or pillows out of the way. We're going to counter this with just a little windshield wiper action. So get your palms behind you. Open up your feet wide and just kind of rock your hips and your legs from side to side. This probably feels pretty darn good. Just get some movement. So we're kind of creating the opposite action with the pose is creating for us initially. And then when you're ready, come back to stillness and we'll move into our solar plexus. So for our solar plexus, we're gonna move into a reclined twist. And so since we'll be doing um, something on one side, we'll be on one side for about half of the chakra meditation and on the other side or the other part of chakra meditation. Uh, so for a reclined twist, find your way to your mat. Now allow your legs to come out nice and long. So you're almost in a shavasana position just for a moment and then guide your knees into your chest. This might feel really good to give them a squeeze, rock from side to side a couple times. Begin to release your left leg down to the mat. I always like to stretch anyway. You're gonna release your fingers around your right shin below your right kneecap. You can 
gently pull your right knee towards your right ear. Reach for the outside of your right knee with your left hand and then begin to gently pull your left, your right knee over to the left. Now, you might notice there's some space between your right knee and the ground. This can be another place where you grab a pillow or a blanket. If it feels okay hanging out there, that's all right. If you'd prefer not to have that sensation, place that blanket, maybe two blankets, maybe two pillows, under your right knee and the ground. Try to envision your right hip stacking directly above your left hip. And your arms, you've got a couple of choices. Arms can come out to a T. Arms can be in kind of a cactus formation. Gently turn your gaze towards the right so that it's going the opposite direction of your right knee. And once you find a place that you feel supported and safe, slowly begin to close your eyes. You need to adjust your pillows, your blankets at any point during this recline twist. You're welcome to. All right. Soften the muscles in your face. Relax your shoulders to the mat and soften your belly. Don't hold it in, just let it relax. Take a deep, deep breath in through your nose. Open the mouth and sigh it out. And for this posture, we're actually gonna cultivate some Ujjayi breaths. So those of you that are familiar with vinyasa will kind of will know what this breath is all about because we're here talking about our solar plexus, we're gonna create a little bit of fire in the belly. So for Ujjayi, lick your lips, close your lips, take a breath in through your nose with a little constriction in the back of your throat. Then breathe in, and then when you breathe out, keep that constriction. So it almost might sound, uh, my favorite, it sounds a little bit like Darth Vader, it might sound a bit like an ocean breeze or ocean wave. So it's an inhale through the nose and out through the nose. You can hear mine or not. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. So today we are focusing, or now we're focusing on the solar plexus, the energy center that lies in your belly. The center holds our personality, our passions, our pleasures, and our creativity. Bring your awareness to this energy center. Imagine that you are radiating yellow light from this space. This space holds our truest self. Sometimes this world likes to try to take that from us. Our truest self. Our self can be messy. Our passions and pleasures aren't always graceful or pretty, but they are us. Take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, begin to build a fire in your belly. Feel this heat radiate throughout your body. Use that Ujjayi breath, victorious, powerful breath to fuel this fire. We'll be here for just another minute or so. Focus on your powerful, fiery breath. Focus on that radiating yellow light coming from your energy center. that ideal that it holds your truest self in being happy, proud of, content with that truest self of you.
right, one more breath in and a deep breath out. Right now we're just gonna switch. We're gonna hang out right here. So from where you are, go ahead and draw your right knee back over to the center. And we're going to essentially switch back to the back here. So uh, guide your knees into your chest and first move gently. No need to move quickly, move nice and slow. Give your knees a nice gentle squeeze as you feel your low back release to the mat. Rock side to side. It feels good to maybe take a happy knee here. You can. You're going to reach for the outside edges of your feet to allow your knees to open wide. Stack your heels directly over your knees as you press into your feet. Gently hold on with the strength of your arms, nice and gently. A little bit of opening in your hips. And then guide your knees back into center. All right, this time allow your right leg to come long. Interlace your fingers around your left shin and gently squeeze your left knee up towards your left ear. Take a breath in. And exhale, guide your left knee with your right hand over to the right. Maybe bring that pillow with you if you need. Guide that pillow underneath your knee if you need. See if your shoulders will allow themselves to stay onto the mat. Envision your left hip stacked directly over your right. And again, arms can be open to the T. That might feel good on your pectoral muscles or perhaps in a cactus formation. And then begin to bring your gaze gently to the left. Close your eyes. Come back to that powerful, fiery breath. Jai breath in through your nose. Enjoy your breath out through your nose. As you inhale, draw confidence up from the earth. As you exhale, release any judgment that you hold. As you inhale, call in abundance. As you exhale, release negativity. The affirmation for our solar plexus is I am fire. As you inhale, recite to yourself, I am. As you exhale, fire. I am. Fire. Continue on your own, maybe for at least three inhales and three exhales of I am fire. Now imagine your truest self. Bring this image into your mind's eye. What does she look like? What is she wearing? What is she doing? Where is she living? How does she speak? What does she say? Who is she with? And how does she express herself? Draw this image in your mind with glorious, beautiful detail. Let the energy from your solar plexus fill you up. Soften every single muscle in your body. Release your ujjayi breath. 
and take five nice, easy, calming breaths to quell that fight. Easy breath in, easy breath out. Four more times at your own speed. Begin to bring your awareness back into the room. Let the breath be natural. Begin to maybe go around a little bit. Allow your eyes to open. And ever so gently begin to bring your knees back into your chest. Maybe into your chest. And when I squeeze down through the low back, press into the mat. It felt good for your happy baby on that side. Let's take it again on this side. Again, for happy baby Ananda Balasana, open up your knees wide, release the soles of your feet up towards the ceiling. Ideally, it's kind of a 90 degree angle ish. Ankles and heels are stacked over your knee. Perhaps you're going to reach for the outside edges of your feet and hang out there, rock side to side. Right, again, to bring your knees back into your chest. Guide your hands behind your thighs. Rock through the length of the mat nice and gently a couple times. It feel good. feels good to roll up the spine a bit. And a little meat in the seated position for our heart chakra, the Anahata. All of our hearts have been a little troubled as of late, perhaps. So this one I think will be extra good. We'll be moving into Sphinx pose. So go ahead and grab your pose, bring the heel keys to the side of my knee them, and slowly begin to make your way to your mat on your bed. To release your leg nice and long, maybe rock your hips side to side, shake it out just a little bit, and a little flutter kick with your feet. Begin to guide your elbow directly under your shoulder. And allow your shoulders to drop or stay a little bit lifted here. Palms are gripping the mat just like we did earlier in class. And you've got a nice firm grip initially. As you begin to sort of drag your elbows back, so you find a nice lift throughout your chest. You're getting a little bit of a stretch throughout the lower spine here, kind of lower to mid. If at any point this feels uncomfortable, you can open up your elbows wide. You can even decide to kind of toss the things part and bring your head down to a pose. So again, things imagine that beautiful Egyptian face, shoulders over elbows, middle fingers pointing directly away from us, gently pull back. Find a nice look through your chest. If you're feeling good here, close your eyes and maybe allow your head to drop ever so gently. But think about your proud chest, your proud heart, lifted and awake and alive. Take a nice big breath in here. And as you exhale, begin to move attention to your heart. And imagine an emerald green spinning wheel. The life symbolizing green glow of the chakra spreads from your heart to fill your chest first and then the rest of your body. Imagine standing under a large tree with a huge green canopy spreading in all directions. 
The wind rustles through its bright green leaves, making a gentle flute-like sound. Start climbing that tree. As you move up, you pass thick branches laden with green. Even sunlight finds it's hard to filter through the green leaves that provide a cool, soothing shade to you. You reach the top of the tree and get a panoramic view of the surrounding area. In every direction you look, there is a sea of never-ending green, lush vegetation. The tree nurtures and nourishes you just as it provides strength, support, and safety to all of its leaves. Now see your fourth chakra spinning and gaining strength. As it spins faster, a green light washes over you and pervades every cell every pore in your body. Breathe deeply and feel the energy funneling into your heart, which is bursting forth with fresh green leaves. Rest for a few moments in this awareness. start descending from the tree. You feel the love and care of the tree whose branches support you on your way down. Once you are on the ground, look back up at the tree and feel one with it. Take a breath in and take a breath out. So we begin to open your eyes and we will counter our sphinx pose with a nice child's pose. So from the sphinx, you end up place your palms underneath you. You can feel your knees press into the mat as you slowly find your way to the tabletop. You can open up your knees wide. Touch your toes, sit back, and just come into a nice, relaxing posture. Your chest and your heart were open. Now feel them relax. Always open, never closed. minutes left and we'll move into our final posture for tonight um, to Shavasana and we'll be able to close that class together with a nice long loving kindness meditation. So to find your way into Shavasana, grab your pillows and your blankets and all that good stuff so you can make it a really nice and juicy comfy Shavasana. Uh, make sure your props are handy. And slowly begin to make your way down onto your mat. 
bring your legs up nice and wide and notice if this doesn't feel great on your knees, here's a wonderful place to put your pillow. They can come right under your knees to give you a little extra support. You can do the same with your arms as you release your arms up nice and wide. Perhaps it feels good for them to be supported. Perhaps you'd like a pillow or blanket under your neck for support. Perhaps you'd like to rest your head on an actual pillow. Just be mindful. I need you fall asleep. That's okay with me. Don't worry about that. And for a moment, lift up through your chest and feel your shoulder blades tuck under ever so gently, opening up your heart space. This really allows you to connect, to open, to feel and share the love that you are cultivating, that you're sending back and forth to each other through the airwaves. So rock your head side to side a couple of times just so you can get a little bit of those jiggles out. If you've got lights on around you, maybe you decide to dim your lights or turn them off, make it nice and soft and comfy. Settle in to this posture. Shavasana is Sanskrit for corpse pose. Makes that a little bit morbid, but the idea being that you have this chance to be kind of reborn your still. It's oftentimes thought of as the most important posture in our classes because it's the time when your body and your mind get to soak up any physical work you've done in your asana the emotional work that you've done in your postures. As your mat becomes that mirror to reflect you back to you. It's your chance to come back to yourself, to your peace. Take a few deep breaths to bring awareness to your heart. Visualize how each in-breath affects your heart physically. Begin to breathe normally, making no special effort to breathe in any particular way. Continue to rest your awareness on your heart. Consider how each in-breath nourishes you as your heart drinks in precious oxygen. The passage of oxygen from the nearby air, through your lungs, and then to your beating heart and bloodstream is the most basic and constant connection between you and the world around you. This simple act of breathing knits together all that is within you with all that lies beyond your skin. Each new breath creates a unity of life as all people share the nourishment that the Earth's atmosphere freely offers. Check in now with how your body is feeling. Check in now with how, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any aches and pains? Do you have any worries or areas of tension? Are you excited, caught up in eager anticipation? Whatever the feeling, there's no need to push it aside. Pleasant or not, let that feeling in. Accept it as part of what it means to be you at this moment. Meet the feeling with curiosity and openness. Note how it registers in your body and how those sensations change subtly from one moment to the next. Whether your current experience is pleasant 
or unpleasant, just witness and accept it. Whether events in your life are presenting you with good or bad fortune these days, witness and accept those events. See them as part of the inevitable ups and downs that all people experience. Just as surely as all people face good and bad fortune, all people all over the world yearn to feel good, safe, peaceful, and healthy. Alongside your awareness of suffering and the fundamental sameness of all people, you can choose to wish yourself well. You deserve this kindness as much as anyone. Begin by lightly calling to mind your own good qualities. Let these qualities remind you of what's good in you. What touches your heart about yourself? Then gently offer the classic wishes of loving kindness to yourself, choosing phrasings that best speak to your heart. May I feel safe and protected. May I feel happy and peaceful. May I feel healthy and strong. May I live with ease. See yourself as being a dear friend to yourself. It might help to first imagine the warmth and tenderness you feel towards an infant or a kitten, as innocent as these small creatures can be. Experience how your face softens and your heart expands in their presence. Now imagine directing these same feelings of warmth and tenderness to yourself. May I feel safe. May I feel happy. May I feel healthy. May I live with ease. Between each phrase, pause for just a moment to drop your awareness down to your body, to your heart in particular. Note and accept whatever sensations arise there. Know that this practice is more than the mere repetition of phrases. The phrases simply open a door to a chance for you to condition your heart by being more open, accepting, and kind. At times you'll find that your attention is strayed from the phrases. Simply begin again. May I feel safe. May I feel happy. May I feel healthy. May I live with ease. As you end this practice, know that it's completely natural for you to treat yourself kindly, even if you may forget to do so quite often. Know that you can generate this tender and loving attitude toward yourself anytime, just re by reminding yourself that this dance exists and how at ease it makes you feel. Difficulty, difficulties and obstacles will arise Suffering happens, but you need not add to that suffering by treating yourself harshly. You can instead offer the ancient wishes of loving kindness to yourself. May I feel safe. May I feel happy. May I feel healthy. May I live with ease. Take a breath in and take a breath out. You can stay right here if you'd like, or if you'd like to begin to come back into your evening, start to wiggle your fingers, a little your toes. Reach your arms up overhead like you are taking a nice, big, good morning stretch. And gently guide your knees into your chest and roll over to the right or to the left. Rest your head onto your supported bicep. Your other palm can touch the ground, supportive Mother Earth right back here to support you. And slowly make your way into a seated position with your eyes closed or just lightly open. You can begin to draw your hands into your heart center, 
your thumbs press into that heart chakra that we just opened up. The energy reaching through your fingertips when you hug someone that you're able to physically touch and send that love to, or even as you imagine, sending that heart chakra energy through your fingertips energetically. Guide your thumbs up to your third eye center, your Ajna chakra. We can get there next time. It's your sense, your center of your intuition and of your light. The light within me sees and recognizes the light within each and every one of you. I bow to you. friends 703 thank you guys for coming hope you feel a little less stressed out now i do thanks allison that was great oh you're welcome and my cat with me the whole time ah i'm jelly i really thought that maybe mine would be more interested but <laughs> actually i appreciate that they were leaving me alone <laughs> uh yeah, thanks guys so much. Oh, thanks, Lanny. Um, so my goal with my classes is to do some balance of these, right? Like have there be some kind of more strength classes, but also kind of the grounding stuff. I think we need it. Um, I know that we were offering some promotional deals for class packs and memberships. So uh, Ava's on here. She's an owner of our teachers. It's neat. We've cultivated a group of teachers that do vinyasa. Um, do Hatha classes for those of you that have been doing yoga for a while. There's even sculpt classes now, which I was just saying I need because I'm feeling kind of fluffy without the hiking that I usually can do. Uh, so it's kind of fun. I think we're all pretty like chill, fun people. So if you think that you'd like to try those out, I think the class pack makes it like seven bucks a class or something like that. Um, so I'll get you guys information on all of that good stuff, but follow us on the Flow Finder Yoga. If you have questions or feedback, let me know. It's really nice to see all of the feedback coming in. Oh, yay, I know, right? Same, Brittany. First time I'm not looking at my phone <laughs> for every <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, but like we talked about, this world's just gonna keep on going on around us and we're affected by it. There's no doubt we can't pretend that we're not, but um, we can also try to be good to ourselves, right? And be good to each other. Uh, so that's all I got. I love you guys so much. It was really nice to see you. Um, hopefully see you again soon.